let's take a look at waves. So first of all, what is a wave? Well, one definition is that a wave is a pattern of disturbance moving through a medium. And that's a wonderful definition, but we also need to define what a medium is. Well, a medium is just what a wave travels through. So, for instance, for a sound wave, sound waves move through the air. So air is the medium. For waves on the ocean, the waves move through the water. So water is the medium for an ocean wave. For an earthquake, an earthquake wave moves through the ground. So the ground is the medium. And for a light wave, well, let's not worry about that. <laughs> That's actually pretty complicated. But a light wave is a little bit different. Just keep that in mind. Okay. So there are many different types of waves, and we're going to try to organize it this way. So under the big topic of waves, there's two major types. There are traveling waves, and there are standing waves. Standing waves we will talk about another time. Traveling waves are simply waves which move. And there are two major types of traveling waves. There are mechanical waves and electromagnetic waves. Mechanical waves require a medium. They have to have some kind of substance which they move through. Electromagnetic waves are a type of wave which do not require a medium at all. And that's a little odd. We'll talk about them towards the end of today. But mechanical waves are ones which require a medium. Electromagnetic waves are ones which do not require a medium. And mechanical waves can be split into two different types, transverse and longitudinal. But let's go back to the concept of a mechanical wave. A definition of a mechanical wave is that it is a wave which transfers energy through a medium which is caused by some initial disturbance. And in the mechanical wave, the particles in the medium oscillate. So let's think of the example of a stone that's dropped into water. When you drop the stone into the water, it causes a disturbance. That's the initial disturbance. And that will cause a wave. It will cause ripples to move away from the point of disturbance. And those ripples will cause the water to oscillate. So each little piece of water on the surface will oscillate as the ripples pass through it. And also, the ripples transfer energy through the water. They transfer energy through the medium. So, those are mechanical waves. They're transferring energy through a medium, the water, and it's caused by an initial disturbance, the stone dropping into the water, and the particles in the medium oscillate. The water oscillates back and forth as the wave passes through. Now, one other concept that we're going to need when we talk about waves is the wavelength. The wavelength is represented with the Greek letter lambda, and a wavelength is defined as the distance between adjacent points in the wave which are in phase. So if I draw a wave right here, and I'm going to draw a sinusoidal wave because those are mainly the type that we're going to look at, but the wavelength is the distance between adjacent points in phase. So it's essentially how far you have to travel before the wave begins to repeat itself. So one wavelength could be found as going from the top of the wave to the next top of the wave. Or another wavelength, another one could be found going from the bottom of the wave to the bottom of the wave. Now you have to be a little bit careful because you can't go from the middle of the wave to the next middle of the wave because that's not going far enough for the wave to repeat itself. The wave isn't repeating itself in the second point right there because the wave is about to go up and previously the wave was about to go down. So you have to go from a point where the wave is about to go down to the next point where the wave is about to go down then you have an entire wavelength. Amplitude is very similar to what we saw in oscillations. Amplitude is the maximum displacement of the medium from its equilibrium position. Period, of course, is the time it takes to complete one cycle. Or it's also, in this case, it can also be defined as the time it takes for one wavelength to pass by a point. Hmm, okay. And the frequency is, again, defined as the number of cycles per time. Now that definition, that the period is the amount of time that it takes for one wavelength to pass by, 
We can see that a little bit better if we draw displacement distance graphs. So I'll start out drawing a displacement distance graph for a sinusoidal wave. And those are the types of waves that we will often look at. So before we go any further, let's make sure that we understand what we're looking at. So this graph shows me the displacement of the medium at each distance. So at certain locations, there's a large displacement at certain distances, and at other distances, at other locations, the displacement is large negative, and at some locations, the displacement is zero. Okay, so this wave is going to move to the right. Let's say that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw the displacement versus distance graph after one quarter of a period has passed. So what that means is that this entire wave is going to shift some amount to the right. Okay, this entire wave is moving to the right. So a little bit later, the wave, all the parts of the wave, will have shifted to the right. And it turns out that after one quarter of a period has passed, the wave will have moved one quarter of a wavelength. In this case, it will have moved one quarter of a wavelength to the right. So one peak in the wave will have moved one quarter of a wavelength to the right. And all those bottom parts will move one quarter to the right. And all those parts that are at equilibrium will move one quarter to the right. And so the wave will now look like this. Now if we look at it a quarter of a period later, even later than that, well, it will have shifted one quarter of a wavelength further to the right. Okay. And then we can go even one more quarter of a wavelength, or excuse me, one quarter of a period later, and one quarter of a period later it will have moved one quarter of a wavelength to the right, and then again we can go one more quarter of a period later, and at that time the wave has traveled for an entire period. And that also means that in space it has traveled one entire wavelength. And so the wave now looks like it did at the beginning. After one period passes, the wave has traveled one entire wavelength. So that comes back to the definition. The period is the amount of time that it takes for the wave to travel one entire wavelength. Okay. Now let's talk about transverse waves versus longitudinal waves. A transverse wave is a type of wave where the displacement of the medium is perpendicular to the motion of the wave. So one example of that is a water wave, a wave on the surface of the water. There, the medium, in this case the surface of the water, is moving up and down as the wave goes by. But the wave itself is traveling to the side. So the displacement of the medium, the displacement of the water, is perpendicular to the motion of the wave. Okay. A longitudinal wave is different. A longitudinal wave has the displacement of the medium parallel to the motion of the wave. And an example of this is a wave on a slinky. If you compress and then stretch out the slinky over and over and over again, you'll get longitudinal waves. And in this case, there are parts of the slinky that are compressed and parts that are rarefied or spread out. And as this longitudinal wave passes by, each little part of the slinky is going to oscillate back and forth, back and forth, left and right, left and right. Now meanwhile, the entire wave is also moving either to the right or to the left. So the oscillation of the medium is left and right, and the motion of the wave is either left or right. So the displacement of the medium is parallel to the motion of the wave which is what is meant by a longitudinal wave. This is a little difficult to picture. Um, sound waves are also longitudinal waves. In a sound wave, there are points where the gas is compressed and points where the gas is rarefied. And if you looked at each little gas molecule as the wave passes by, you would watch it oscillate back and forth in the same direction that the wave is traveling. Now, you can also have displacement versus distance graphs for these. It's just you have to kind of do a little more thinking to understand what the displacement versus distance graph means because it looks like the wave is longitudinal in the distance excuse me in the displacement versus distance graph however 
it's just telling you information in a different way. In For a longitudinal wave, the displacement versus distance graph is telling you that here, the medium has been shifted, say, in the positive direction, to the right. And here, the medium has been shifted to the left. Here, the medium has been shifted to the right. Here, the medium has been shifted to the left. The next thing we will look at is the wave equation. So this goes way back to the concept of speed. So speed is equal to the distance that you've traveled divided by the time that it takes. So let's apply that to the wave. A wave speed would equal the distance traveled by the wave divided by the time it takes for the wave to travel that distance. Okay, well let's think about the case where the wave travels one entire wavelength. Okay, well if the wave travels one entire wavelength, then the time that it takes for the wave to travel that far is the period. So wave speed is equal to wavelength divided by the period. Okay, well we can move that around a little bit because, let's see, we have wavelength times 1 over the period. Well, 1 over the period, we've seen that. That's the frequency. So the wave speed is equal to the wavelength times the frequency. Wave speed is often written as lowercase c. So that's where this equation comes from. c is equal to lambda times f. Wave speed is equal to wavelength times frequency. And the last thing we will look at is electromagnetic waves. Turns out that these are transverse waves, but they don't require a medium to move through. And the reason is because they're kind of their own medium. And we're not going to get too deep into that because we need to know a little more about electromagnetism. But electromagnetic waves are oscillating electric and magnetic fields. That's why they're electromagnetic waves. Now, one peculiar fact about them is that they always have the same speed when they travel through vacuum. They always move at 3.00 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. In other words, they always move at the speed of light. They do slow down when they pass through matter, and we will look at that a little bit later, um, and they are categorized by their wavelength or frequency. So the categories of electromagnetic waves are radio, microwave, infrared, visible, ultraviolet, x-rays, and gamma rays. That order that I gave them to you in is going from long wavelength to short wavelength. It's also going from very low frequencies to very high frequencies. And you should be familiar with the ranges of each. So radio waves have wavelengths of about 10 to the minus 1 meters to 10 to the 3 meters. Microwaves have wavelengths going from 10 to the minus 3 to 10 to the minus 1 meters. Infrared are 10 to the minus 6 meters to 10 to the minus 3 meters. Visible goes from about 400 to 700 nanometers. UV, ultraviolet, goes from about 10 to the minus 7 to 10 to the minus 9 meters. X-rays goes from 10 to the minus 9 to 10 to the minus 12 meters. And gamma rays are waves with wavelengths shorter than 10 to the minus 2 meters. And these ranges are not absolute. Some people might disagree on exactly where the boundary is between microwave and infrared or between UV and x-rays. But this gives you a general idea of the size of the wavelength for each category of electromagnetic wave.